previously on, on the Dragon, Dragon Prince. Prince. I totally missed something. I missed the fact that Var- No, sh I almost got it. What the fuck is his name? Varen. Varus. Viren. I totally missed that Viren was going to sacrifice his life for the king. He had that conversation with, with the king where the king asked him, Would you sacrifice your life for me, Viren? And he was all over the place. But then he came back and I think that was the appeal he was going to make. That he would take the king's place. Which is really cool and it sheds a whole new light on his character. I was also thinking that in the last episode, we never saw the king being killed. And so for me, that's sort of a red flag that something's up. We don't actually know what happened. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's dead because the, you know, the thing... The elf thing fell off. I think he's dead, but I don't know if the elf killed him or if maybe Viren killed him. So I'm going to be looking out for that. I'm going to be looking for clues. And also I want to see where their journey goes because now for the first time they're out into the world, the three of them. The dragon gets me every time. Look at this guy. Chapter four, bloodthirsty. So, in the last episode, we saw her wristband come off when the king was dead. But I guess this is another one? I'm not sure what this one means. Is this like her tribal band or something like that? Don't judge me. This frog has very judgy eyes. Glow toad. You've just made yourself a powerful enemy. Seems like the king was loved by some, at least. A funeral so soon is madness. It is tradition to mourn fallen kings for seven sunsets. I understand your concern, Opeli. Opeli. We must move forward. What's he hiding? <sighs> Inappropriate. <sighs> Long night. Drink this. I call it hot brown morning potion. That's good. Yeah, right? I call it coffee. And it's damn good. Can't live without it. In his final hours, Harrow called me his brother. That didn't happen. Where are the princes? They need to be here. The princes are dead. <gasps> He's just really going all the way out there. I mean, if you're going to take over, you may as well take over, am I right? I think it was Mark Twain who said, always tell the truth, then you don't have to worry about remembering anything. Viren has to remember a lot. He has to remember everything. This is all a lie. What happens when the kids come walking back in? This creates a weird incentive for Viren to hunt the kids. And it's very natural for people to be suspicious of this, right? Like, how convenient. The king's dead, funeral's rushed, and then you take power. I'm glad there's an observer to sort of point out that this is all a little bit convenient. Light the pyre! Oh, wow. Ooh, did not expect this. Claudia. That's a lot of spider juice. <laughs> oh no, Claudia's sort of daddy's little girl a little bit. We are at war. Today, we must mourn sevenfold. For tonight, there will be a coronation. He's learning. He's learning. He needs to get there. You know, it's not easy to be king. He's ironing out the wrinkles. Because uh, I feel like there are way better ways he could handle that if he wants people's approval. But Sora knows that Callum's not dead, right? Or at least he will not buy the story that Callum died in that room when the king was assassinated because he was there. Claudia's in deep, huh? Callum. Hey, that's your name, right? Callum? Clem? Or was it Camel? Right? It's not easy. You know, there's so many names to learn, and they're fantasy names. You know, names are tough, you know, names are tough. Everybody has them. There's just too many, too many names. <laughs> I guess I was just distracted trying to draw this primal ball. Primal stone. Right. One funny thing I thought about later, you know, I can't help but make comparisons between Callum and Sokka because, you know, voice actor. But Sokka is notoriously bad at drawing. Callum is, like, amazing. It seems like he has a photographic memory. You do know what the six primal sources are. Uh, if I say yes, are you going to make me name them? I got it, I think. It's earth, water, oh no. The sun, the moon, the stars, the earth, the sky, the ocean. Dark magic. 
They're the original and purest forms of magical energy. The sun, the moon, the stars, the earth. The earth? <laughs> that confused me for a second. So that wind breath spell you did? You'd usually need a storm or at least a strong breeze. But with that stone, you have all the power of the sky. Cool, it's materia. I just realized. It's big materia. Huge materia. That's what it is. Wait, I've seen these before. At the Banther Lodge, there was this little cube thing, and it had these exact symbols on it. Oh, that's where they're supposed to go, right? That's where the king was going to send them. I'm sure it won't be crawling with humans. Humans that are looking for you and want to kill me! Yay! No, it's the Winter Lodge. It's been empty for months. We can build dirt men. We can go dirt sledding. Princes are supposed to be good at things. Uh, sword fighting, leadership, riding horses. But I've always been kind of bad at, well, everything. Last time you fell in sh And then you called me a mage, and that felt right. I had a weird dream. There was this giant pink hippopotamus, and I pulled its ear off because it was made of taffy. What does it mean? Then I tried to thank the hippo for the taffy, but he couldn't hear me. Right, he has no ear. Makes sense. <sighs> Let's go get your cube. Just please, no more detours, all right? Or heartfelt speeches. It's interesting to me that Rayla connected so heavily with what Callum was saying. I feel like it's setting something up, although it could just be that she's just a wonderful person who's like really sympathetic to his needs. But it feels more like she can relate to that exact thing that Callum was expressing, you know, finding his role. And I guess that sort of fits into what little I already know about Rayla. Like she just, she just didn't fit in with the elves at all. Like she asked for the knife sharpening thing and they're like, you mean a whetstone, idiot. She just didn't gel with that group. It just seems like her ability and her talent and her athleticism and her upper body strength took her all the way there without her actually being well suited for that social dynamic. Drink this. Uh, we don't drink blood. It's moonberry juice. Is that what humans think we are? Bloodthirsty monsters? Oh, look at that, we're here. Good timing. Okay, so this is the game room. Cube should be in there. Wow, they really have to carry this egg. There's that athleticism. But it is kind of weird there's no one here, since this is where Dad was sending us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we probably shouldn't have come here. You could have put it in the bag the whole time. Yeah, how far has word spread of their deaths, and what does it mean for these people to see them alive? It's gonna get weird. And to Maya? Oh, uh, that door's locked. I don't believe in Lux. Okay. <laughs> Someone's here. What? No one here but us and all your human troops. Why are you saying human troops like that? That's how I always say heavily armed human troops. <laughs> Subtle. Is it because he's with a girl? Yes, again. Who's there? Dig in. I received a messenger bird from the king yesterday. Wait, Claudia had that, no? He gave me a letter too, but I must have dropped it somewhere. Wait, what? What is Claudia doing? Interesting. Interesting. Above all, see to it that my sons are safe. P.S. Once their safety is assured, the boys may wish to build a dirt man. <laughs> and dirt sledding. See, I'm telling you. So this guy doesn't believe in locks, but I guess he believes in backbreaking labor. Maybe we should tell her, Callum. Tell her what? About the egg. And Rayla. To Aunt Amaya, elves are monsters. But if we just explain everything. It won't work. Humans and elves don't trust each other. Ezra has such a good heart. He's like uncorruptible. He just started off so, so good. I can't quite put my finger on it, but it doesn't feel like he's naive. It just feels like he's better than everyone. He may not be considering the risk, but I think that comes from strength. There's definitely reason for Callum to be nervous. But for me, Ezra's take on it is more satisfying because you can't fully predict what will happen in the world, you know? like. Who knows where this adventure is going to go? But you can do what you think is right. And that has a lot of value in itself. You know, and in many cases, I think that has more value. It's like beautiful and rare for someone to know who they are and know what their values are and want to do what they feel is right, you know, and not be corrupted by like fear or hatred. You know, I think this is a good thing. I think it's a positive sign of his character. Yeah, but he's not quite old enough yet to actually have any like impact on events. Everyone treats him like a kid. 
Oh yeah, her sword's on the table. Oh, scared me. The princes have disappeared. She had a sword this whole time? Oh, damn. Careful with those. Wouldn't want to lose a finger. I mean, can you imagine going through life with only four fingers? Oh, what the heck? This is one of your weirdest ideas. Weirder than snail armor? As snails already have armor. Then why do they keep getting smushed? We're not... <clears throat> my point is, I don't know if this plan will work. Have you met Bait? Say hello to my little friend. Nice repeat. <laughs> Cute. I feel like a lot of this could have been just avoided by telling the truth, like Ezrin said. I feel like Ezrin, Ezrin should be leading the party. Stop right there, elf. Callum, Ezrin, come here. Callum, we should just tell her. Boys, get away from her. Sorry, this is unrelated and going way back. I just realized she said she doesn't believe in locks. He was translating for her. <laughs> Oops. And she believes in backbreaking labor. <laughs> she has no idea what he's saying. He says, if we don't let you go, you'll kill them. You are a monster. Go ahead. Yeah, he kind of forced her hand. The next time I swing my blade, I'll end both of them in half a second. Oof, this is going to be an awkward campfire conversation later tonight. I can see it already. Move, humans. Ow. Poor Ezrin, he had nothing to do with this. He's just getting dragged into it with a knife to his neck. You just created a whole thing of problems. Corvus! Track them, but stay out of sight. And when you see an opportunity, free them. Cool. It's a toy. I hope it was worth it to you. Putting everyone's lives in danger. Damn. Yeah, more than a toy. Why are you always lying? You can't be lying like that. Callum didn't have to think at all about that lie. He was right on the tip of his fingers. No song for the occasion. Hmm? That bird also has judgy eyes. Though it is a heavy burden, I will humbly take up the battle in Hero's name. I will become Lord Protector of the Realm. Somewhat mixed reaction there. Right, this is what I was wondering. They know. The princes are alive. Whoops. <laughs> well, there's the incentive to kill them. So it seems natural that Viren would try to take over here and consolidate his power, but I'm wondering if there's something else he wants. It seems like he wants a war, and I'm wondering if that's what it looks like on face value, or if there's something more he has to gain by doing that. It's weird to think that the king, as, as great of a person as he was, it was sort of his final mistake that solidified this whole thing, right? Like, calling Viren a servant, that he belonged down on his knees. That sealed the deal. I mean, this could have gone a very different way, if not for that. Maybe. Who knows? I will give the king credit for getting in dirt snowman jokes even after his death. Pretty impressive. Before the video ends, I have to give a very special thank you to everybody who joined up for the top tier on Patreon this week. As many of you know or have noticed, we are now doing six uploads a week, three of Dragon Prince and three of Full Metal Alchemist. This is possible thanks to Patreon support. In the future, I'm hoping to up the amount of content to four videos of each series per week. That will become possible with continued Patreon support like this. So thank you to you guys. So today, a very special thank you goes to Chase Mahar, Sitasian, Noah Smith, and Michaela Davey. Thanks so much to you guys and to all my patrons and to everybody who's been supporting the videos. It means a great deal to me. As always, I love you guys and I'll see you next time.